Yes, I'm going to tell the story of Hansel and Gretel. Now, uh, Hansel and Gretel were the children of a poor woodcutter whose wife was the children's stepmother. And this stepmother was not a very nice person. In fact, times were hard. There wasn't much food to go around. And the stepmother was resentful of the children because she felt that they ate too much. So she devised a plan to take the children out into the woods and leave them so that they all wouldn't starve to death. So she went and talked to her husband and convinced him that that's what they needed to do. Well, the children were overheard this conversation, so Hansel and Gretel were listening in the other room. And that night, after the parents went to bed, Hansel sneaked out of the house and gathered up as many white pebbles as he could find. He had a plan for the next day. So he came back in the house, Gretel was crying, and he told her, don't worry, Gretel, I've got a plan, I've got this figured out. So the morning came, and the parents uh, gave the children each a slice of bread, and they wandered off into the forest. And every so often, Hansel would stop and drop one of the white pebbles. And said, come on, Hansel, let's keep moving. And they finally, they got out into the forest, and the parents told them they needed to build, or gather up some branches to build a fire. They said, you kids, wait here by the fire, rest up, sleep a little bit, and uh, we'll be back to get you later. Well, the children sat down and they ate their slice of bread. They got sleepy, they fell asleep. They woke up and it was dark. The parents didn't come back. So they realized they were abandoned. Again, Gretel was crying and Hansel told them, don't worry, we'll wait for the moon to come up and we'll follow our trail back. So they waited, the moon rose and they they followed the trail of pebbles, and they made their way back to the house, and they got there in the morning, and the stepmother answered the door, and she was not happy. She was not happy to see the children. You naughty children, you slept too long in the forest. We thought you left us. So now she was stuck with them again, and again, food wasn't any more plentiful now. And she was still resentful that they ate too much. So she again went to her husband and said, look, we need to take the children deep into the forest, somewhere where they've never been, so that you know, they won't find their way back. And the husband was reluctant. He loved the children, but she said, look, you agreed to the plan once. You need to be consistent and stick to it again. <laughs> and so finally he relented, and he said, OK. And again, Hansel and Gretel were listening in the other room. They overheard this conversation. So Hansel's like, well, I know what to do. And, but when, after they went to bed, he tried to get out of the house and found all of the doors were locked. Windows were locked. He couldn't get out. He was stuck in the house. So now what to do? Well, the morning came, and they got their slice of bread, and they headed off into the forest. And Hansel would stop every so often and tear a piece of his bread off and leave it on the ground to create a trail again. Well, they kept going deeper and deeper into the forest. You know, it's getting darker, and the air is getting more still and more quiet. All I could hear is the sound of the leaves crunching under their feet and the twigs, and the sound of the birds in the forest. And they got out there and they said, okay, we're gonna build another fire. Same drill, had the children rest by the fire while they went off to look for wood. The children ate Gretel's slice of bread, Hansel didn't have his, and uh, they waited, and they fell asleep, and the parents, again, didn't show up. They, abandoned, they were abandoned again. Gretel was crying again, and Hansel said, look, I left another trail. We're going to find our way back. We just need to wait for the moon to come up and find it. Well, when the moon rose, they got out, and they found they couldn't find any of the breadcrumbs. The birds had eaten all of the breadcrumbs. They had no way back. They were lost. They wandered for a couple of days in the forest. They didn't find their way back to, to the house. But they finally, they were really tired and hungry, and they found this bird, this amazing white bird, that was singing a beautiful song. And they were enchanted by this bird, so they followed it off into a clearing. And they came into this clearing, and there was this amazing little house made of cake, candies, and sugar, clear sugar windows. And they were so hungry, they said, we're going to start eating this house. So they went, and they started ripping off pieces of the house and gnawing on it. When uh, suddenly the door flew open, and this old woman with a prune shriveled face popped out, and it startled them. And they said, she said, Don't be afraid, children. It's okay. You're, you look like you're very hungry and 
tired. Why don't you come inside? I'll fix you something to eat, and you can rest in some nice, comfortable beds. So she led the children inside, and she fixed them pancakes and milk and nuts and apples. And there were these beds with nice, clean, white linens, and the children thought they were in heaven. But this, was, uh, this woman was actually a wicked witch that used this house to lure children in for the specific purpose of cooking them and eating them. So in the morning, she went and she snatched Hansel before he woke up and she put him in a stable outside and locked a gate so he was trapped in there. And Gretel, she said, we're going to fatten your brother up and we're gonna, I'm going to cook him and eat him and you're going to help me. And so Gretel had no choice but to help this old witch. And so they you know, gathered wood and, and did all the cooking and everything and they'd go out to feed the, the old woman would go out to feed uh, or go to check on Hansel in the stable. But Hansel was a clever boy, and he found a bone in the stable. No, the old witch's eyesight wasn't very good, so when it, whenever she'd come to check on him, she'd ask him to hold out his hand, and she'd feel his finger to see how plump he was getting. Well, he just put the bone out there instead, and that's what she was feeling. And so the witch got frustrated because Hansel wasn't getting any fatter. So this went on for a couple of weeks, and finally she said, that's it. We're going to cook and eat your brother, whether he's fat or skinny, doesn't matter. Let's get the oven ready. So she had Gretel get the oven ready, and she's, she told Gretel, she had a plan that she was going to shove Gretel in the oven. So she was going to have her, I want you to lean down and look inside the oven and see if the fire's ready. Well, Gretel wasn't stupid either, so she played dumb. She said, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. You mean like this and this? No, you fool. Like this. And the old witch got down, and Gretel shoved her into the oven, slammed the door shut, and the, and the old witch was left to burn to death. So Gretel ran out of the house, and she went and got Hansel out of the stable, rescued him. Now that the witch was dead, they looked around in the house to see what there was, and they found this chest filled with jewels. And they gathered up all the jewels, put them in their pockets, and they headed off into the forest. Well, they came across this kind of a wide stream that they couldn't get across. But the most amazing thing was there was this huge duck. And it's not just that the duck was abnormally large, but it could talk, too. And the duck said, climb onto my back and I'll carry you across the water. So they did. The duck carried them across the water. They got across and they wandered through the forest and somehow they made their way back to the house. And when they got there, they found out that their wicked stepmother was dead. Their father, the woodcutter, was happy to see them. He was ecstatic. There still wasn't a lot of food, but he said, I'm just happy that you're back. And the children said, pulled it, reached into their pockets, and they pulled the jewels out, and they scattered them on the floor, and they knew that they would never have to worry about food or the wicked stepmother again, and they lived happily ever after. <laughs> Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Take a minute and write some comments for us.